Calculating the correct Forex size can be confusing. There have been traders who thought they were only risking 2% of their account, but when the stop was hit, they found out they actually lost 20% because they did the math wrong. So we're on the same page. Take a pop quiz. Here's two questions for you. First one is EuroCAD. Look at the two prices in yellow and write down how many pips between the two lines. I'll give you five or 10 seconds. If you need more, go ahead and pause the video. The last problem is CAD JPY. How many pips between the two lines? Take a few more seconds, pause if you need to. First one was about 800 pips. Quick math, anywhere from 750 to 850 would be in the ballpark. Second answer should be around 230 pips. If you got both of them right, go ahead and skip to the timestamp here. If not, let's go over what a pip is and how to calculate it. Think about when you want to buy something for $124.13. Intuitively, we know the one means a $100 bill and the two means a $20 bill. We wanted to pay the whole thing in pennies. In that case, you'd need 1,623 pennies. Forex works exactly the same way. Their penny is called a pip. A pip is the fourth digit after the decimal place. Here we have four pips, 30 pips, 200 pips, 1,000 pips. Sometimes you'll see a number after the pip. That's called a pipette, which is a tenth of a pip. If you want to know how many pips between the two prices, it's really just basic arithmetic. Subtract one from the other. Now remember the digit to the left of the decimal represents 10,000. So multiply 10,000 times 0 0.03087 and you get 309 pips. The only exception to this rule are yen pairs, which take this format. The pip is two to the right of the decimal. Here we have four pips. The two represents 200 pips. Let's calculate the distance between these two lines. Subtracting, we get 2.333. Remember the number to the left of the decimal is hundreds. And since the two represents hundreds, that means we have a 233 pip move. Of course, we don't actually have to do the math every time. Let's go over a quick way to find the pips. In trading view, use the ruler tool. Click twice and the pips are in the box. Here we also get 233 pips and the pair before was 309, which we just saw. You know what the pips are. Now I'll show you two ways to calculate your trade size. Links in the description below. Going back to our chart of pound Swiss franc, we want to go short with a stop above the top of the range. Ruler gives a stop of 65 pips. Google Forex Position Size Calculator. We're trading GBP CHF. Assume we're on a 100K funded account, risking 2%, stop is 65 pips. We'd go short 2.82 lots. Most people chart in TradingView, but actually place trades in MT4. I'll show you a free way that's super simple, right in MT4. I'm in MT4 with a 100K demo account. Click on the market tab at the bottom and search for lot by risk. Once you download it, open a chart and drag the EA onto it. In order to use it, you'll hit the P to draw the line at whatever price you want to enter. S will be your stop loss and T will be your take profit. Depending on your MT4 settings, you may get an unhappy face in the top right. This means it's not capable of sending an order now. To fix this, go to Tools, Expert Advisors, and you have to check allow automated trading. When you click OK, the sad face is still there. Close the chart and then reload it. Should be working now. Click P, S, and T to set your levels and then click the green button to send your order. With these settings, it would buy 3.36 lots price gets down to our level. What if we want to keep price and take profit the same, but want to be more safe and move the stop loss down to the previous low? Click S to remove it and replace it. Send the new order. And you'll see since the stop loss is about twice as big, your order is only going to be half as big. Going short works almost the same way. We want our sell stop to get triggered when price goes below the last candle. Stop is above this cluster and take profit is at the start of the uptrend. This gives us a one lot short. 
Let's say you think the stop is too close and you want it all the way up here. Resending the order, you'll see the size drops from 0.94 down to 0.14. If it's not obvious by now, I need to make one point explicit. The more precise you can set your stop loss, the bigger you can trade, and the more profit you're gonna make when you're right. Let's look at a quick example. You'll see exactly what I mean. Here we're on AUD JPY and we wanna go short. In a previous video, I went over how to find a fixed profit target by running an ABC pattern. If you missed it, click here. In this example, we're gonna keep the profit target the same but have three separate stop losses and see how that affects overall profit. First stop will go above the recent consolidation. Second stop will be above the yellow resistance line. Third stop is above the recent high. We have a $100,000 funded account and risking 2%. So that means no matter where we set our stop loss, if the sizing is correct, we'll lose $2,000 on each of these trades. The difference comes in when we're right. Letting the trade play out, we see the take profit was hit. Even though each target was in exactly the same spot, depending on where the initial stop was, the profit would have ranged from $9,000 down to $3,280. One of the quirky things about Forex is prices are relative to something else. It's not like stock where the price of Tesla is $185. There's no such thing as the price of a euro or the value of a dollar. It's only the relationship between the two that matters. We have 100K risking 2%. Stop loss is 20 pips away. We'd go long or short 10 lots. Keeping everything the same, except we're not trading Euro USD anymore. Let's trade Euro GBP. Everything's the same except our position size is cut down 20%. Or how about Euro NZD? Now our lots double to almost 16. Sometimes you'll hear newer traders saying they always trade one lot no matter the size of the stop loss or the Forex pair. But there's no one size that fits all when it comes to trading. Now you know how to find the number of pips to your stop loss and calculate a proper position size for your risk management. There's an art and a science to setting a proper stop loss. If you want to learn the best way to manage your losses, click the video here and I'll talk to you soon.